Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to our 10-part New Age video series where we are examining all things New Age. In the previous video, we looked at a brief overview on what is the New Age movement, and today we're diving into its history. If you haven't subscribed to this channel yet, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button so you can get notified when these videos drop. And don't forget to like and leave a comment on your thoughts and insight into this topic. When and how did the New Age movement begin? How old is the New Age movement, and who are some of the founding members of this thought? Today we're looking at all this and more, but first, stay awake. Please stay awake. A lot of times with history and history lessons and information on historical events, a lot of times we find them boring and we fall asleep, but if we understand the history of the New Age movement, it'll really shed light into how it's crept into the church today. Future videos, we're going to be looking at what are the beliefs held within this movement, what exactly is the age of Aquarius? Who are the main advocates for this belief inside and outside the church, and what does God even have to say about this? So, jumping right into it, how old is the New Age movement? See, many people actually believe this view is a fairly recent thought that was made famous by Oprah Winfrey as far back as 2008, if not farther. However, that would actually be an incorrect view because we could trace this philosophy behind the New Age almost 200 years earlier, if not farther. One of the earliest is actually a man by the name of Emanuel Swedenborg, who lived in the 18th century. And if you're familiar with my Mormon videos, you'll remember that his works are very similar to Joseph Smith's later revelations, specifically from Swedenborg's Heaven and Hell writing. Swedenborg communicated with angels and demons, and he attempted to harmonize religion and science. Many people believe that he actually prefigured the New Age movement. This can actually be seen in a short work titled New Jerusalem, the description on Amazon really tells all about his influence into the view of a dawning age of global spirituality. It says, Swedenborg understood the city of New Jerusalem, as he described in the book of Revelation, to mean not a physical city, but an epoch of history, a new spiritual age that was just beginning to take shape during his lifetime in the 18th century. This short work, presented as a series of teachings that characterize this spiritual age to come, is also one of Swedenborg's most concise and readable summaries of his own theology. Building on fundamental concepts such as good, truth, will, and understanding, he describes the importance of love and usefulness in spiritual growth. The philosophy was already prevalent, however, in America in the 19th century, seen by the work of William Blake, Phineas Quimby, Helena Blavatsky, and Mary Baker Eddy. In 1810, in Milton, a poem, William Blake coined the term New Age. In the preface, it's written, The stolen and perverted writings of Homer and Ovid, of Plato and Cicero, which all men ought to contemn, are set up by artifice against the sublime of the Bible, but when the new age is at leisure to pronounce, all will be set right, and those grand works of the more ancient and consciously and professedly inspired men will hold their proper rank, and the daughters of memory shall become daughters of inspiration. There's little doubt that the age spoken of here was an age that we're discussing today, namely a new epoch or a new era that he saw arising shortly, similar to that of Swedenborg. Later around 1830, Phineas Quimby founded the New Thought Movement, and Dr. Joseph Murphy refers to Quimby as the great American healer. He reveals that through Quimby's beliefs and teachings, he could command another's body and heal them, in a similar fashion as Christ did, as recorded in the Gospels. A few decades later, in 1875, Helena Blavatsky, a Russian living in New York, co-founded the Theosophical Society. The Society reports that Helena traveled the world searching for wisdom about life and the reason for human existence. Again, the basic questions that establish one's worldview. Eventually, Blavatsky brought the spiritual wisdom of East and Western mysteries to the modern West, where it was said they were virtually unknown. Her writings became the first exposition of what we know of today as the modern theophysy. Due to Helena Blavatsky, America receives a pluralistic worldview due to her adoption of various religious teachings. The Theosophical Society records their vision, mission, and ethics on their official website stating they have a vision of wholeness that inspires a fellowship united in study, meditation, and service. A mission of encouraging open-minded inquiry into world religions, philosophy, science, and the arts in order to understand the wisdom of the ages, respect the unity of all life, and help people explore spiritual self-transformation. In an ethic, 
holding that every action, feeling, and thought affects all other beings and that each of us is capable of and responsible for contributing to the benefit of the whole. Key things mentioned in here are the fact of meditation, open-minded inquiry into world religions, the wisdom of the ages, spiritual self-transformation, and the benefiting of the whole of humanity through our actions and our feelings and our thoughts. These are all teachings that are still found in the New Age movement today. A few years later, Mary Baker Eddy began what's known as the Church of Christian Science in 1879. While recovering from a life-threatening accident after reading the Bible, she believed her healing was based upon the laws found within Scripture, and that these laws could be applied to anyone. Espousing that healing isn't miraculous, but simply understanding God's love and power, she went on to pen science and health with key to the Scriptures. William Butler Yeats also helped continue the New Age philosophy and literature. Yeats was the founder of the Abbey Theatre in London, a renowned poet and devotee to the esoteric section of the Theosophical Society. He was admitted to society in 1885 and joined the society in England in 1889. Seeing the influence of occultic Gnosticism, pluralistic teachings in the 19th century, the 20th century sees a continuing rise, but more specifically centralized pluralistic tenets. Here we are introduced to a man by the name of D. H. Lawrence, who was influenced by theosophical elements, ancient Egypt, Greek wisdom, the unity of religions, and the mystery of Atlantis. The influence in his life can most clearly be seen in his essays, interpreting the Bible in a symbolic way. T. R. Wright states that Lawrence, while remaining detached from theosophical orthodoxy, can be found to practice a mode of double reading of the Bible similar to that of Blavatsky and her followers. It's pointed out that Blavatsky's interpretation of the serpent in the Garden of Eden has fed into the symbolic significance of Lawrence's writing as seen in the plume serpent. There is a New Age thought that the Bible is to be taken symbolically much more so than literally, and that leads to a lot of these false views. Then in the early to mid-1900s, Edgar Cayce, who was an American mystic and supposed theologian, founded the Association for Research and Enlightenment. Edgar was considered a pivotal influence on the later to be known as the New Age movement. In his childhood, Cayce believed he was communicating with his deceased grandfather and often played with imaginary friends who he believed were to be spirits. This fascination led into his occultic practice in the performing of psychic readings for over 40 years. The majority of his written works were focused on holistic health and illnesses, and many claimed physical healings during these readings. He taught on channeling and mediumship, which is allowing a spirit to speak and act through one's body. Casey, like many other New Age spiritists, took the Bible symbolically, and most specifically the fault in Genesis and the apocalyptic writings of John in the book of Revelation. Casey reported that while he journeyed in the spiritual realm, he was able to uncover the spiritual meaning and symbolic meaning in the book of Revelation, and found to be of importance to awaken our superconscious mind to allow one to be at one with God. This superconscious mind is the same thing as the Christ consciousness in other terms found within Eastern mysticism. There's no doubt that Edgar Casey was very influential in the New Age as we see today. However, what we're most familiar with is the New Age movement in the modern days, and this movement can be traced to around the 60s, the hippie counterculture movement of the 1960s and 70s, through its use of psychedelic drugs, became heavily involved with New Age spiritual thought. The tone of religious and spiritual expert experimentation of the times contributed heavily to people's openness to trying new approaches to God and spirituality. It was not uncommon for hippies to take whatever part of religion it felt off for truth and combine it with others to create a spiritual smorgasbord. The New Age movement gained the most momentum in the 1980s with the inaugural Harmonic Convergence, which was held in 1987. New Age spirituality began to skyrocket in its followings. The first convergence occurred August 16th and 17th in 1987 and was the first synchronized global peace meditation in human history. This was not a centralized event, but rather tens of thousands, if not millions of people, gathered around sacred sites on Earth such as Stonehenge, Machu Picchu, and others for a coordinated moment of meditation and prayer. 
when Jose Argelis, the brainchild of this event, was asked why he believed the New Age was dawning, he replied, This belief comes from a study of the Mayan calendar, which I discovered actually describes the passage of Earth in our solar system through a beam 5,125 years in diameter. We entered this beam in 3113 BC and leave the beam in 2012 AD. August 16th and 17th of 1987 marks the point in the beam when there is a break in the wave harmonic that this beam represents. The day also corresponds to prophecies concerning the return of the god hero Kukulkan, as well as various other intertribal prophecies calling for 144,000 awakened sun dancers to dance the new age into beginning. Jose was also asked if this was a new religion. To this he said, yes, in a way it is a new religion. The religion of the earth. A religion that encompasses all religions and beliefs by shadowing our oneness with the earth in all of life. A religion galactically attuned to the new frequencies so that the timeless values of service and compassion for the higher good will be reestablished in the hearts of humankind once again. The harmonic convergence still continues to this day with the goal of global meditation to invite peaceful extraterrestrials to show themselves. These followers state that there were hundreds of sightings and that they aspire to collectively raise consciousness, uplift humanity into a higher resonance beyond world peace to universal peace. So we can see this new age view though has evolved and is very broad that houses many views and beliefs has been around for hundreds of years and if you were to do more study you can find influences back to before Christ's first advent. Some of the major catalysts to the new age that we're seeing today, such as relativistic truths, channelings, psychics, meditation, symbolic interpretation of the Bible, and other pluralistic practices can be attributed to Swedenborg, Blavatsky, and Casey. Much more can be said and revealed, but this just suffice for now to gain a brief understanding of the formation and the rise and the evolution of the new age thought. So in the next video, we're going to be looking at the major common beliefs that are held within the New Age movement. So be sure to subscribe to this channel and be notified when that video drops. So until next time, thanks for watching and God bless.